Welcome to Power Charting. I'm your host, Bruce Frazier. We have a great show for you today. This is a continuation of our discussion from the first two episodes. Please go back and check those out. We go through the outlook for 2023. So far, so good. Things are moving along very nicely. I have a very few brief comments about updating the market for the information we talked about in the last two weeks. And then we're going to get right into a discussion with Johnny Scan. And John is going to show us a scan that is going to show us how to define the emerging rotational themes using a Wyckoff type methodology and something that you can use yourself. You can program this. It's quite good. So with that, let's get started, and we will begin by announcing that the market roundup with Martin Pring. Martin met with me online, and we talked about the U.S. equity market outlook for 2023, as only Martin Pring can do, and he did a spectacular job. Go to StockCharts.com, watch this on demand, you're, I think, going to find it very interesting. And we are going to use Martin's KSTs today on uh, the scanning program. Just to uh, remind you, you've seen this chart before, but this is the TLT. This is the 20 plus year US Treasury ETF. And a gigantic top was formed in 2021. And this top here gave us a phenomenal count from 152 down to as low as 91. We had a redistribution count that took us to 93. We split the difference with a remarkable 92 low. And what I want to do is I just want to highlight what has happened since. We had uh, done this chart. This actually, this chart was published as of September 28th, end of the third quarter. And then uh, I've added this information since, but note the very sharp rally that's occurred. Peers, we might be range bound between 92 and 109. But the point here is, is that there's, a, I think, a very good chance for the time being that interest rates have risen as much as they're going to rise for a while. And uh, I bring this up only in the regard, now keep in mind, Falling prices equals rising interest rates. And that is what we're seeing with a price chart of bonds. But let's now go to the two-year treasury. And uh, it is by many to be considered that the two-year treasury, and I've shown you examples of how the two-year tends to lead the Fed funds rate up and down. And now we're starting to see something very interesting in that the uh, two-year, uh, this is a line chart here on the right of the two-year yield, and uh, that yield is starting to drop. You can see here in the 50-day moving average that it's now actually cl uh, climax, so to speak, turned down, gone below the moving average, appears to be in a near-term downtrend. Very interesting because we could be seeing the peak in the two-year rate, which clocked in at around 470 over here, and now has gone down, and this is the chart, I just updated this for you. It's gone down to 410, and we have a count range. This is a little swing count, 415 down to 390. And uh, the thinking is uh, that I've heard is that getting below four is going to be really important to the Fed's policy decision making, and that they are going to start to be th to think in terms of following the two year rate as it goes down. Now they're going to do this with a lag because the Fed is going to uh, probably increase rates next week at their FOMC and probably at the next meeting thereafter, some debate on how much that increase will be. 
but the language from the Fed will be very interesting because the language could soften and we'll be listening for that. So be aware of uh, rate policy uh, decisions next week, keeping also in mind that the two-year has a count that goes down to around 390, getting it from above 4.70, down below 4%, quite a move down in the near term. Okay, and uh, we'll keep going here. Uh, this chart is really important. You've seen me put this up a number of times. And what I really want to do is just make one big point here, and then uh, we'll keep going. And that is that we talked about the very important resistance that was occurring in this downtrend lower highs throughout and then we had a shortened downward thrust after this november december high from the downtrend line and it paused at the support determined by the may low and then rallied back up and now it's rallied to and through the two very important points of the downtrend line and the 200 day moving average and those are both very important. Next stop would be the resistance area at 4,100, which is this high back here from November, potential to have a higher high out here in the future with a target. We had, Well, I'm gonna show you the target in just a sec, so I'll hold off on that. But just keep in mind that this area, even though you can break through overhead supply and then fail again, we're and we're certainly not pulled away from this line very far, but we are now above it. And if we can hold here and keep going, it's going to be, I think, very positive for the stock indexes going forward. So let's look at a point and figure chart. You've seen this chart in the past, and here we see the um, uh, we see this uh, swing count, the green area. Counts up 4325, 4575, which is right above this high that was made mid year. And that I believe is the August high. So if we can get a sign of strength, we would call it in Wyckoff above that level. We may get a pullback thereafter, but it would be potentially in the context of a much bigger accumulation structure going forward. So this is something we're gonna really keep an eye on because we're right now just around this 4,100 level getting very close to the November high. And this is important resistance as you can see. And so here's the downtrend in the point and figure drawn off these two peaks here early in the distributional structure. And you, you see at the time that we drew this chart, January 18th, we were still below that trend line on the point and figure. This is an update and this is what has happened since we last looked at this chart, which is now it's above this very important downtrend line. And the next stop needs to be 4,100 and above to prove the strength, giving us the room to get up to this 4,325 area. So these uh, areas that we're at right now are all important. And recent trading activity has been encouraging for the bulls. So we'll keep a very close eye on that. And then uh, I want to show you this. This is the uh, New York Stock Exchange stocks above their 50-day moving average. So when we have uh, uh, most stocks in a downtrend, this number will be quite low. And when it gets into these high regions right here, which is around 80 uh, as we speak, let's uh, uh, do this uh, zoom in. And you can see that we have just touched 80. That means 80% 80 of stocks on the New York are above their 50 day moving average. That is really positive breadth. And so once we get into an overbought condition, we want to be aware of it, but the market can really rally well in an overbought state. We just want to watch out for any kind of serious deterioration like this decline here in August, which shows that the majority of stocks are starting to correct back below their 50-day average. 
this has not happened. We're overbought, but we're very strong. We have a very strong 80, high 70s, 80% of stocks that are in uptrends above their 50 day. And we would expect this to continue, especially with the scenario that we just looked at. So uh, this is the current status. We'll watch this closely. Also, we have been documenting these green shoot areas, which are these purple arrows uh, going back to February. And they produced really nice swing trading rallies that we talked about in real time as they were happening. And those uh, uh, have worked out very, very well for us. October, September, October low and phenomenal broadening out of the market uh, from that level. And so uh, we watch this indicator and talk about it often on power charting. And then uh, last thing, let's look at the NASDAQ comp point and figure. Here you can see a swing trading count. This count gets us up to around this uh, 12,500 level, currently at around 11,500. And uh, I've updated this data so you can see it currently at a little resistance level here. So uh, getting out of here and rallying and getting up to this next resistance zone would be quite important uh, to uh, continue the upward trend. But there's good breadth internally in the NASDAQ comp, and we can look at that at a later date. So what is the count potential for the NASDAQ comp off of this swing trading structure? Green box down here exemplifies the count area, 21 columns, and this is a three box reversal, 100 point scale method. Well, this gets us all the way back up, but caveat, we need to climb above resistance to uh, be able to clear the way with higher highs, but there's a huge amount of room to move up. Point and figure so far looks constructive, but it's got to get out of the structural area with resistance at around 11.5. And then we um, have the potential to get upwards of the 16.4 area, which is just uh, two boxes above the high that was set at the top of the bull market in late 2021. So enough fuel in the tank to get up to the uh, prior highs, uh, which could take a long time to do, but this is uh, very interesting. Um, and then, uh, finally, let's just take a quick look at the dollar. And uh, the dollar over here, as you can see, has just been extremely weak. At the time we had the buying climax, we profiled this chart up here, very long-term chart. And uh, we threw over both weekly and daily. And we've been going down, down, down. Point figure count took us down to 27.60. And at the time we did this chart, December 1, uh, we had just gone to 28.4. Here's the update. Well, now we're one box below the low count level. So it would not surprise me to see the dollar stabilize here for some period of time. And that may affect things like materials, oil, uh, gold, silver, things like that. But uh, I just believe the dollar will just be in a trading range because it has not built account for another move yet. And uh, so we will keep a close eye on that. And with that, let's get over to Johnny Scan. We will be right back. We are fortunate today to have with us the one and only Johnny Scan, John Colucci. John, thanks for being here. Great to be here, Professor Bear. Exciting times out in the marketplace, wouldn't you say? I would say. So we had promised in the last two episodes to get into the concept of identifying rotational themes uh, in the market using the concepts of Wyckoff. And you've put together a just a wonderful uh, scan concept for us that we all could apply and use in our stock charts scanning engine. So John, take us take it away and show us what you have. Thanks, Professor. Let's take a look and see if we have any emerging rotational themes, and we'll look at those through the lens of Wyckoff structure. So 
One way we can do that is by simply looking at the sectors, the XL spiders. Here they are, 11 spiders. These are just in alphabetical order. And this is what Stock Charts has identified as the performance view. So you can simply enter these symbols into a chart list and pull up the performance view and look at these beautiful metrics you have, one, five, one month performance. You have all these different performance uh, periods that you can contrast both absolute and relative performance in the sectors. So alphabetical order here. Here are the sectors one month performance sort. So here we just take the one month column, click on it until we get the biggest number first. And we see XLC, XLY, XLK. And those are traditionally risk on type sectors. Risk on, important concept for us here, wouldn't you say, Professor? Absolutely, because we take risk very seriously here. Yes, and that can be an indication of a brightening perspective on the market, the wall of worry, all of the dismal uh, press out there after a very tough year without question, but look Look who's bubbling to the surface now. XLC has been terrible for so long, and now it's leading on shorter-term performance metrics. It also have the ability to sort in relation to a comparison. What an important relative strength analysis right from the chart window itself. Here we're using VTI, which is the total stock market index from uh, Vanguard. And we did use that in the Wyckoff market report too. It's very fungible, covers wide ground and great, great uh, purveyor of ETFs at Vanguard. So we use that. Here is what we can do once we have that information pulled together. And that is we can scan for stocks in our strong sectors, communication, cyclical technology, we're going to use an indicator called the KST. It's Martin Pring's no sure thing. And of course, Professor Bruce, long time relationship with Martin Pring. And we have the 23 outlook for Martin Pring that we can use to backstop our analysis. So here we have the KST which is a line and a signal, much like a MACD or a PPO, but a little bit different because it's a smooth rendition of rate of change in four periods. We just simply want to have the line be greater than the signal, which essentially is an average, and the value of the KSD greater than zero. We're going to do a modified relative strength sort using the scooter numbers themselves. We'll see that that's very good, except for newer issues may not have a scooter number. So if we go ahead and see those uh, items here, that's the parameters for our scan. There's a little something on the KST itself. Go check that out. Very, very interesting article on the KST. When we run that scan, tremendous number of results, 565 instances of potential outperformance. And we see that the scooter numbers are in the proper order. They uh, represent our sort column, which is always the furthest to the right. If you don't see your sort furthest to the right, it didn't run. Scooter is duplicated because it's part of uh, the return window as a, a default matter. But tech, discretionary tech, we're seeing a lot of that because, of course, we're we're searching within those sectors where it becomes important is to look at the industries that are up there. Energy, semis, auto parts, gambling, telecom, a lot of interesting areas that have struggled over the past year. So 565 results. Let's take a look now, at our first chart. If you don't want to see that many results, what you can do is you could raise the minimum price of the stock, like go up from 
ten dollars to fifteen dollars in your scan. The other thing is you could raise the minimum daily volume and raise it from say a hundred thousand to two fifty or five hundred thousand or even a million. You could look at that and see how that uh, adjusts down. You'll tend to see more bigger stocks, not more. You'll just see bigger stocks, uh, larger companies, and uh, it'll take out the small ones. But you might be interested in the small ones. So anyway, just a footnote on that. Oh, absolutely. Many ways to exclude. This is a wide net. We're casting a very wide net here. And uh, you can narrow that down, no problem. First solars are... Uh, initial stock we're going to take a look at. And we always want to check and see if our scan return is appropriate. Here we have a million shares plus on the day. That covers that. More than $10, that covers that. And we see that the black line, which is the KST, is above zero. And it's above the red line, which is the signal. So all boxes ticked in terms of the scan return. And we have a very interesting stock that uh, moved up and off its 50-period moving average. Your thoughts here, Professor? Yeah, a couple thoughts. One is KST, the, the bottom indicator. Uh, note that when the black line is above the red line and it's above zero or even just around zero, that you have an uptrending action. Notice how, especially for you swing traders, that you can see that the swing train trades or swing moves tend to coincide with the rising trends of being above zero and being in a rising trend. They're beautiful in that regard. Certainly the case now for that, as was scanned for. And then the other part is, is notice how when the KST is down, the black lines below the red, and it's in a downtrend that that coincides with a period of general trendlessness or maybe even a downtrend as we saw in December. So uh, really interesting structure. Last thing I'll say about First Solar is a really good sign of strength rally at the beginning of 2023. The pause or the reaction that's come in the last couple of weeks so far is very shallow, dull, quiet, and looks like it's just pulled back into overhead uh, prior resistance, which is now support and could be the beginning of a more important rally. What a great tape reading event right here at 141.81. Springy bar, very low volume, no tests needed on that one off to the races. How interesting is that? A great looking structure, yeah. Absolutely. Here is another very interesting semi. This is our test systems. And again, Price in the right area, signal and line correct. And of course, we have the higher volume there, uh, almost a million shares on the day. Moved up black candle today, but very low volume and everything else looking pretty good. What a beautiful structure this came out of, wouldn't you say, Professor? This one caught my attention uh, last year because it was one of the very strongest semiconductor names in a in a weak group. And uh, so go back and look at the longer term relative strength study. And you'll note now with this beautiful January rally that we have new highs in price, local new highs, and also new highs uh, in the relative strength. So this is really a, a, a just acting so well and is truly leading the semis upward. Here we have a media agencies Dada, not familiar with it. Certainly know the term Dada, but it's not one I've used in a while. Here is a beautiful consolidation just at the 200, which is the black dotted line. Momentum move out. Dissipation of momentum here, but still positive. So we're getting this rate of change that is up sloping as reflected by the triple quadruple smoothing of the KST. Line above the signal, price and volume in the right place for analysis here. And look at that scooter value, 99.4. So very interesting stock here, wouldn't you say? Fantastic. Uh, above its 200-day uh, moving average, the 200-day moving average is now rising. 
confirmed uptrend. Everything from uh, late December back looks like accumulation of some sort. It'd be good to look at a bigger picture of the chart. And that sets up a big cause for a big move. Might just be getting started. Really interesting um, yeah. structure here. Cooper Standard from the auto parts area. And look at the move off of that 200 Cross with a 200 and just parabolic going from $6 up to 14. That's more than a double in about two and a half weeks. A little bit of consolidation here, but very interesting, very Wyckoffian price movement there, wouldn't you say, Professor? Really like the auto parts uh, segment, like the industry group. Uh, this is a phenomenal move here as the new year started. And uh, this backup is very constructive because note how the worst part of the backup occurred initially. And uh, and then it just stalled and appears to want to make another run at the recent highs and maybe beyond. So really a great looking chart. Just a squeaker on a volume, 104,000 shares. And we have the black line curling down toward the red line which would eliminate it. So this one was on the bubble, but made it through. We have just enough time for one more, John. Well, gambling is the talk of the town right here, Las Vegas Sands. Look at that volume today. Incredible. Everything showing positive signs. People are thinking about the future and the possibility of hitting the gaming tables and traveling. Your thoughts? Professor. Fantastic uptrend, good relative strength. These stocks have been leadership for a while now. And John, with that, I think we're done. Thank you so much. This is a great scan, and we look forward to seeing more of these as we get into the year. So thank you, John. Great to be here. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, Hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.